Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Aside from the text formatting options that we have available on the home ribbon in the font group, we do have some advanced text formatting options as well. Now, before we get onto that, I just want to go off on a tangent very slightly related to the mini toolbar. If you remember in one of the earlier lessons, I showed you how to disable the mini toolbar when you have text selected. So what that means is that if I select something, so let's say we select the word lazy, I don't see the mini toolbar pop up because I disabled it. So let's go back in and just turn that on so you can see the options that you have on this mini toolbar in a little bit more detail. So let's jump up to file, go back into options, and on the general tab, I'm going to reselect show mini toolbar on selection. So let's click on OK. Now, when I select anything in this document, a piece of text, for example, I'm going to see that little floating toolbar. And as we mentioned, this is just a quick way to apply formatting to pieces of text so that you don't have to keep going back up to that home ribbon. So from here, I can change the font style that I'm using. I can change the font size. I could do things like bold, underline, italic, so on and so forth. So let's leave that on for the time being. Now, when it comes to your advanced font formatting options, you're going to find these in a dialog box that's kind of really hidden from view when you look at the ribbons. Now, if you take a close look at the home ribbon, notice that in the corner of some of these groups of commands, we have this little diagonal arrow. And if we hover over this diagonal arrow, we get a screen tip that tells us that clicking this is going to allow us to customize our text using advanced font and character options. Notice there is also a shortcut key for this of Control D. So if we click the diagonal arrow in the corner of the font group, it's going to take us into our advanced font formatting options. Notice at the top we have two tabs, font and advanced. Now on the font tab, you're going to find a lot of the things that you already have in the font group on the ribbon. For example, I can come in here and change the font that I'm using. I can change the font style. So if I want italics, bold or even bold italic, that isn't an option that we have on the ribbon. I can modify the size. I can choose my font color from my palettes from here. And if I want an underlined style. And I can even choose an underlying color from here as well. I can then apply effects. So things like strike through, double strike through, that superscript, subscript, small caps, so on and so forth. So many of these options we already have in the font group on the home ribbon. But one thing that's useful in here, and I did mention this in a previous lesson, is that we can choose to set default options in here. So if I decide that I want to use a specific font throughout my entire document, I could set it as the default. Even if I wanted to use maybe, let's say, century font, bold, size 12, I can select all of these options and then I can choose to set that as my default. And I'm just going to turn off the underline style. So if I choose set as default, I then get a choice of if I want to apply this default to this document only or all documents based on the normal.m template. Now the normal.m template is basically the default template that you get when you create a new blank document in Word. So effectively for all new documents. So I'm going to say for this document only, let's click on OK and you can see that that's updated. Now let's reopen up that pane and this time I'm going to use the shortcut key of control D. I also have a text effects button down here. So this is going to allow me to apply a text fill, a text outline and other types of effects as well. And we saw those earlier. Those are available in the font group on the home ribbon. Now, what about if we jump across to the advanced tab? What do we have in here? Well, this is where we can do things like adjust the character spacing. So if I click the drop down next to spacing, I can choose to set expanded spacing for my text. 
And if you take a look at the preview at the bottom, can you see that we now have a little bit more space in between each of these letters? And I can choose by how many points I want to expand this by. So if I increase this, it's going to make the characters further and further apart. And of course, we can do the reverse as well. I can choose to have condensed characters. So that makes those characters extremely close together. And I can modify this so that they're slightly further apart. Now, I will say that most of the time you'll probably be using normal, but sometimes when you're working in a document, it can be quite a nice effect to have a little bit more space in between characters or a little bit less space in between. Now, I'm going to set mine back to normal and simply click on OK. The final thing that's worth noting here is that when we went into the advanced options for font by clicking this diagonal drop down arrow, the diagonal drop down arrows in these other groups won't bring up that same window because these will be the advanced formatting options for whichever group they're part of. So if I click this one, we're going to get the advanced formatting for paragraphs as opposed to font. Now, there are other ways that you can change the look and feel of text in your document. For example, using word styles. Now, we're not going to get into styles in this particular lesson, but just to kind of give you a little bit of an introduction, if you cast your eyes up onto the home ribbon, notice that we have a very large styles group just here. And if we click the drop down, it's going to open up the styles gallery. Now, from here, we can apply different types of style depending on what text we have highlighted. All of these styles are completely customizable, so you can get them to really look and feel the way that you want. And we're going to spend quite a bit of time later on talking about word styles because they are so important to use in a document. Not only do they change the look and feel of your document and allow you to update font styles quickly, they're also super useful when you're trying to put together things like tables of contents. So just keep that in the back of your head that we can apply formatting to font using styles as well. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.